Hey gang, it is Mark here and today we are going to do Notary Marketing 101. I'm going to show you um, the what of marketing. Now, the how and the implementation uh, is nuanced. It requires a lot more detail and obviously I can't do that in the scope of YouTube. Uh, so, But I'm going to give you the broad overviews. Now, this right here we're looking at is a blue ocean. Now, a blue ocean in marketing is a term used for a market where there's no competition. And uh, marketing in the notary space, specifically digital marketing, is something of a blue ocean. There's not a lot of people doing this. There's certainly not a lot of people teaching it that I'm aware of. Uh, so it is a great place to market. Now, most notaries get into this um, with uh, signing services. They get hooked up with signing services, vendors and platforms, as I call them. Like uh, a platform would be something like SnapDocs and vendors would be something like uh, ServiceLink or um, <clears throat> Wilson Financial Group with Nationwide Title Company. So this, these, the combination of these equals free leads, uh, which is great. It's really awesome to get free leads on autopilot. People just kind of calling you and blowing up your phone and whatnot. Uh, but it, it's a good place to start. It's a place to start your business out, to jumpstart your business. It's a bad place to stay. As you can see here, this is a red ocean. And a red ocean in marketing terms means that it's kind of saturated. A lot of people are here. A lot of people are doing this. And a lot of people in this space right here also fall under uh, another uh, dilemma, which I call is the one trick pony syndrome, which is the one trick loan signing pony. Uh, basically, they are a signing agent and a mobile notary, and that's about all they have to offer, uh, which can be somewhat problematic uh, in this red ocean space, especially when the markets uh, make, make a downturn. So let's move on. Um, now, in marketing, you have what we call an avatar. This is basically who your customer is and what they look like. So we market as notaries uh, B2B, business to business, and B2C, business to customer. Um, now, B2B marketing is actually pretty easy. It's generally easier to do because they kind of need what you're offering anyway. So it's more or less just making it a little better or doing it if other people aren't even doing it. Um, so your B2B avatar would be your title companies, your realtors, your lenders, uh, your attorneys, uh, those are uh, the common ones. There's actually uh, more in the B2B space that I'm not going to go into right now, but uh, those are the common ones, uh, especially for doing this kind of uh, mobile notary service. Now, in the B2C, this is your general public. This is your community. It's your local market. It's the people that are within some proximity to you. Now you can do virtual services, obviously remote online notaries virtual. Some of the document preparation stuff we do, we do it statewide. So the Florida law allows us to do it. I don't know about a bunch of other states. I've kind of listed some of them out in some of the other videos that allow that, but some states specifically don't. But since I know Florida and I'm comfortable with Florida, I offer virtual legal document assistance in Florida as one of those services, those expanded services uh, that would be B to C. So let's talk about uh, marketing and let's talk about what you should do first if you are brand new, we'll say. So if you are brand new and this is you, this is your little business, your pin, your location. If you're brand new, uh, step number one should not be to be paying for any marketing to anybody at all whatsoever. If somebody tries to convince you to do that and they tell you you're going to get two to one return on your ads and they're going to hook you up. Uh, run for the border. Now, this is going to happen with um, sites like Yelp. Yelp, uh, while they are a directory, what they do when you create a directory listing with them is they call you, text you, email you, nag you to let them help market your services. And they are going to make big promises and they are not going to deliver very well on those promises. So if you're going to throw 200 plus dollars a month away on their advertisement, please don't do that. Just you take take two of those monthly payments and you can get you can get my you can get marketing training from me and you'll be able to do all this on your own for life, not just with this business, but with any business model. We're going to talk about more of that later. I mean, let's talk about 
what to do first, and let's talk about what the common uh, advice is uh, and kind of why I think that is flawed. So the first thing you should do here, step one, should be uh, word of mouth, okay, uh, WAM. That is by far the first thing you should do is you should be telling people that you know about your services, word of mouth. Hey, I offer these notary services. I offer this credit repair service. I offer this uh, fingerprinting service. I offer this uh, apostille service, w whatever services you're offering, even if it's just the notary service. Hey, I offer this service. You know, tell, you tell people at church, you tell people on your social media, you tell people word of mouth should work for you. It should get you started and get you going and get you making money. Okay. That should always be step one. You shouldn't be pouring money into stuff without first pouring uh, just your time into word of mouth. Uh, and word of mouth should generate referrals, which generates more word of mouth. And um, this is a concept that is probably not talked about a lot, but it is definitely where you sh where you should be starting. Now, from there, step two is, of course, business cards, which kind of plays with the word of mouth. You need some business cards. You need to have, if you go to Vistaprint or wherever, get some business cards made and be handing those business cards out to people everywhere, okay? Um, it's pretty easy, and with time, it becomes a very natural thing to do to hand people your business cards when you're at the gas station or you're at the grocery store or you're at church on Sunday or whatever you're doing, it'll become pretty natural to hand your card out to people. So step three is um, like a vinyl wrapping your card. You don't have to vinyl wrap your card. Now, I got a buddy named Rex who's got this uh, truck. It's fabulous. He's vinyl wrapped it with his notary. It will flat get attention. And that is for the life of the time that he owns that vehicle. He has got fantastic rolling advertisement. Now, you don't have to go that far. You can... It could be as simple as uh, like a $50, $60 vinyl decaling in your rear window, or it could be a magnetic um, door, um, like card or placard, uh, but anything like that on your vehicle, because now you have this rolling mobile advertisement. Uh, and then the next step from there should be, I've got this little signpost here. That's what like for bandit signs or banners. So maybe putting... Uh, banners up in the community, like whether it's like at the like, like the public schools, like the drive through pickup, that's one that we do, um, or bandit signs, which they call them bandit signs because in some communities they are a code violation, so they tend to have a shorter shelf life. Um, but and then of course personal branding, getting branded material like uh, pens, which you've heard me talk about, and um, flyers and that kind of thing. Now. I should stop here and say that if you haven't seen the video where I talk about how to make your notary services stand out, how to sell your services, you should go watch that video because that video goes into the speak, the advertising speak and the mindset, what you should be saying, what your message should look like. This isn't uh, this lesson isn't about uh, what your message should be. It's just about where to send your message, how to get your message out there, but not what your message is. So that is a video I put out on how to kind of craft your message. So go watch that one. Um, I'll put it in the suggested at the end of this videos to watch that if you haven't seen that one yet, because it's very valuable. Uh, but anyway, so once you've gotten to this point, your next step, of course, we've got the little globe there, the internet, the next step should be digital marketing. You're ready to go to, into the digital space. Now up here, what have I got up here? This is the conventional notary wisdom. This is what I see on YouTube. This is what um, loan signing agent course sellers are uh, telling people to do. One is cold calling. See, we have the snowflake with the telephone. And then the other is the is the, the, the drop-ins, the walk-in, kind of walking on into title companies. These are um, methods that do, in fact, work, um, but they aren't very time efficient, uh, meaning that they're limited. You're limited in the amount of time and the efficacy of them because of the time constraint placed on them. Now, if you are flat broke and you got no money for advertisement, you got no money to get cards and decals and stuff, you probably should start here. You should do this because, hey, it's basically free. It's free to get on the phone and call people. And it is 
free to uh, go pop by a business and ask them, you know, for their business, if you can work with them. So they are free methods that they, they are not the most effective. They aren't going to have the fastest and the broadest reach, but they are a place. Uh, they do have their place um, in this. They're just not the only thing. They're about the only thing being taught and not the only thing that you should be doing. Definitely not the most powerful uh, concept that we're going to go over. So let's move on to digital marketing, okay, which is uh, marketing done on the internet, which we're going to cover the different um, the different mechanisms. And I'm going to talk about some of the things I found that work well and things that uh, maybe don't work so well. So digital marketing, uh, we, uh, we have, um, of course, here we have the internet again, and we have what I call uh, pay-per-click marketing. And then we have uh, what we would call organic marketing. And um, organic marketing, we'll go into that a little bit further, which involves some SEO or search engine optimization, which isn't as complicated as you might think. I actually can break it down and simplify it um, in, in, in more detailed lessons. But um, the next form of digital marketing uh, is email marketing. Now, email marketing can come into two fashions. One is... Um, the, what I call the outreach, okay, a cold outreach, emailing uh, a, it can be emailing a title company, uh, or it could be emailing um, other community-based businesses. Uh, Grace and I email um, assisted living facilities uh, in the community and set up events there, and it works very well for that. Uh, but then the other form of email marketing is what I call drip marketing, and this is a a drip is where you are kind of sending out information to existing customers, people who like subscribe to your newsletter to keep them in the loop, to run specials. And that is a list that you want to build. And building that email list, uh, you can find will be very profitable for you in the future because you can find that you have the ability to click send email, make offers to a large group of people if you come across a new service or you're running a special, et cetera, et cetera. Now, the next form of digital marketing is social media marketing. And that obviously can take on many forms. Um, I talk about rapidly syndicating all of your, um, your content onto platforms. And I've shown how to do that before. Uh, but there is a bit of a sequence that I like to, uh, deploy with this that I found works very well. And that is, um, you know, one is you post a, you kind of revolve, you have this revolving cycle of posts. And one thing that you would post would be like a meme, right? The sunglasses, right? Everybody's seen that meme. Um, so, or a funny, something funny, a, a funny related to type your industry meme post. And then followed up with the next post, whether it's the same day or the next day, the next post should be like an article, something that is, um, you know, informative, deep dive. And then the next post, you could be again, like the meme, it can be a real short thing, like a quick tips, real quick tip for people. And then the next post should be some kind of video content. Um, ideally your video content, um, People like to see, people like to put a face uh, with a name. So they like to see who they're working with. A lot of, one of the mistakes I see in a lot of notary websites that I've gone over, and I've looked at a lot of them, um, even prominent notaries, and they don't have any pictures of themselves anywhere on their website. It's like a faceless website. And I feel like that is doing themselves a disservice because I feel like your customers in your market, they want to put a name to a face, even if you're homely. I mean, they still want to put a, a, a name to a face. So you should have um, professional pictures of yourself on those websites and do some videos where you're talking about your services. Now, if you're totally camera shy, there are ways to make faceless videos um, with AI automation. All right. So that is the that is kind of the, the broad overview of the digital marketing space. Now let's break this down a little bit more. So with pay-per-click marketing, um, there's really only three that I'm really favorite of, especially if we're talking about 
narrowed right down to your notary services. Now, if you have expanded services, you can get a little more creative with that and you can do, you can maybe run ads on Facebook and stuff. But uh, if you are just talking about your notary services, uh, I think they're best served one in locally in YouTube um, with a, like an in feed type of ad, which I do. I teach how to do that. I have breakdowns of exactly my process for that. And the other one is Google. Now with Google, you sh really should only be doing for your notary should be click to call. It should be a click to call campaign that is designed to only hit somebody with a mobile device because if they're looking for notary near me and your click to call ad shows up then that is the most logical way unfortunately i don't see a lot of notaries do this in fact when i do see notaries running paid ads it's a paid ad to their website and that's a good way to waste money um so and then the I also see where there's ads. I've seen tutorials where people are talking about Google ads and they are Google smart campaigns, which are actually unsmart campaigns because they're a waste of your money because they don't allow you to filter the ad down really to your target customer and, and avoiding people who aren't your target customers. So um, that's kind of a mistake, too. Now, the one down here at the bottom is Craigslist. That's what I, I have there. There wasn't, I didn't find a graphic for Craigslist, but so it's just like a, a little local ads thing. So uh, Craigslist is, would be one of my favorites to uh, create campaigns in. It is $5 uh, for a month listing. And I pretty much almost always get um, calls off of those. So, uh, and Craigslist has an interesting thing to it that it bleeds through, meaning that your ad can go further than just your local area. Uh, so those are pay-per-click. Now let's talk about uh, organic. See, we've got the little organic leaf there. So organic uh, leads and organic advertisement can come from, well, directory listings. And um, there are... Um, a multitude of directories. Now there, Neil Patel actually has a list of his top 50 directories to start with. And uh, you should definitely do those. Um, I can actually email you his list if you want it. Uh, they're free. I think most of them are free. They are sites like Yelp and Bing and uh, Foursquare. Uh, now the thing about those is that is like rudimentary. So that is like the basic because everybody's doing those ones. So you really should go over and above and get into specialized directories, specialized to your industry, because not everybody's doing that. And that will uh, play more to your advantage. And I'm going to tell you how and why. But so organic marketing, the next thing is your Google business. It used to be called Google My Business. Uh, and then they changed to Google Business Profile, which is now actually all part of Google Maps. Um, now you see with this little diagram, I have these feeding these because your directory listings uh, will actually feed your Google listing and feed your map. This is um, something that's not talked about a lot, but the more of those map pins you have inside of other listings, basically referencing your business, uh, the more credibility Google has. It's the effective it's effectively the same thing as with a with a website or a blog post having backlinks to it, having those multiple map pins, consistent map pins uh, in directory listings bolsters your Google listing and your Google listing is your local listing. And it is um, a very powerful source of of lead generation. Now, the next thing there is, is there's content creation. There's like blog creation and uh, of course, search engine optimization, which uh, seems to be this very mysterious thing. Of course, I, I can break that down into very simple, actionable steps and very easy to understand steps uh, so that you can make the most of that. And that is just showing up in Google searches locally. Um, and if you get with the right directories, they can help you with that, too. We certainly designed our directory, Noble Legal Pros, with that in mind uh, to be a, a multifunctional directory. Um, but, uh, so, and then of course, all of these things all play a part in a landing page. Um, so a landing page has some 
small content call to action it has it can have your map pin embedded into it as well and it can be uh, of course backlinked to directory listings and um can be SEO optimized as well, meaning you should have, as far as landing pages, you can make a bunch of them. And, and if you make a bunch of them rapidly, changing some of the some of the keyword search ever so slightly, this is it's a concept called programmatic SEO, um, which uh, of course I teach in several courses. But um, so, and it's another powerful concept for organic leads and organic traffic. Traffic is people and. So people are, of course, customers. So let's move on. Okay, so Facebook. Now, Facebook is where a lot of your customers are going to be, both your B2B and your B2C. Uh, now, with Facebook, you um, have, I would say, probably the most effective and especially free place to put uh, some of your content and some of your offers is in local Facebook groups. Uh, local groups, uh, local community-based groups is a good place to post in Facebook, obviously to your own profile as well. Uh, and you should create, this is a fan, it's an Oriental fan, but fan page is for what that's for. So your Facebook fan page you should have and should be putting content on that um, and should request people to uh, like your fan page, you know, uh, especially people in your existing Facebook network. And then lastly, there's Facebook ads. Now, Facebook ads are, um, I can definitely, I show people what not to do on Facebook. The majority of all people I talk to who do Facebook ads um, do them wrong. Uh, they are kind of, they kind of get gravitated into running the wrong kind of ad that does not work at all. It will just take your money and Facebook's happy to take your money. So is Google. Uh, and all of the other people are happy to take your money unless you tell them exactly how you want to play this game, but you can run Facebook ads. There are the right kind of campaigns to run and there's the wrong kind. And I break that stuff down for people as well. So, and then lastly, one of the methods that uh, we deploy and we've deployed with great success is something I call BOPA, which is borrowing other people's audiences. And that's basically, you find somebody, you have your marketing messages uh, and you find somebody who's already got a large audience, somebody or some business, it does and you borrow their audience to get your message out uh, and that can be done free and it can even be done paid it's there's a lot of different ways that that scenario can play out there's a lot of different platforms that you can play that scenario out on um, that all end up being very very effective and very free or low cost advertisements so that is it so now i had mentioned that this is kind of the overview of how to market now the implementation and the execution of this stuff especially uh accurately and methodically or if you even if you wanted to say kind of like a um copy and paste you know basically i have advanced digital marketing for notaries so where i show my exact marketing strategies the exact tools i use the software i use it's literally um where you can kind of copy and paste stuff that I have, uh, messages that I've used, and uh, the exact methods. You can see the exact methods that I use step by step um, to create successful campaigns. Now, question for you, here's it's quiz time. Of all those marketing methods and the digital marketing methods, which one do you think? Sorry about that um, glitch there. Which one of those methods do you think is the most effective in terms of the cost and the effectiveness uh, and the speed of implementation? Uh, the answer is the email marketing. Uh, that's the right answer. Um, so anyway, so we have this advanced digital marketing. If you want to check that out, uh, you can go to marksias.mykajabi.com. It's actually mark Sias mykajabi.com and that's where all of our courses are housed actually but uh we have an advanced digital marketing course and it's not just digital marketing it's actually all the marketing it's everything we talked about here kind of broken down into greater detail and greater explanation 
And there's actually stuff in there that I didn't mention in this at all. Um, other kind of marketing, I guess, hacks, ticks, uh, tips and tricks uh, that you can also do. Some other uh, tools that are out there that you can leverage uh, and some other some other ad sites or ad platforms that um, you can quite easily take advantage of as well uh, that I did not mention in this. But so that is available for two monthly payments of two forty nine, and you can learn all of the proprietary information that uh, I've acquired over years and thousands of dollars of experimenting with. So that's it. That is uh, marketing for notaries one hundred and one. I hope you found this stuff useful. Um, if you did, please like, subscribe, and share. And we will see you next time.